Sylvay's edge function is one of the best way to build agentic workflows, or even if you want to go a bit further, AI agents. So today we're going to be putting a land graph and land graph agent into a Sylvay's edge function. How are we going to do that? So this is a quick diagram of what the agent would look like. Um, so on the left side, we have the land graph agent on a very high level. So an agent has tools, so tools such as you know functions or things that it can do. Uh, and we have the, we, we're going to have to give it instructions. So this is like a system or developer prompt for the agent. And then we're going to need a runtime for the agent. So like, is it going to be running on a server? Is it going to be running on a, an edge function? Um, and then last but not least, we're going to keep track of some sort of persistency. So like history of like what the conversation with the agent has been about. So if you look in the middle here, tools and instructions, they can either be static or dynamic. Um, in our case, our example, we're just going to make them static because we can make it uh, to, make, to just to make it uh, simple. And uh, tools and instructions, we can declare them uh, either on our application or on the edge function themselves. The runtime, so this is where we require a, an edge function for this. Um, because think about it. So if you were to run this agent on your uh, application, maybe it's on, it's just a web server, then it, sometimes it could be a little bit blocking. Um, sometimes it could hog up all the resources of your server. So what's a better way to do this? You can spin up a serverless function. So in our case, a super base edge function to kind of like take that workload and then run it on um, a cloud service um, so that you know you can just spin up a bunch of them in parallel and then your serv web server will not be slowing down because there's way too many agent agentic processes running on the server. So, and last but not least, uh, we have the persistency, so like the message history and metadata of the things that happen during an agent run. So Superbase Edge function is stateless. So you run it once, it goes away, it's gone forever. Nothing is saved. Um, but we want this to be persistent because you want to be able to continue the conversation with this, the same agent, or we want to be able to, um, pull in data from our somewhere to be, to, to make it more useful. So in that case, we have, uh, two solutions for this. So one is the edge function. We can use that for the, the tools and instructions for the agent and give it an environment for it to run in and a database, which Obviously, it can come from Superbase because Superbase is a database company. Okay, so in a bit more detail um, of what the application that we're going to be building would look like, we have the user who's going to send in a query to an app. This app is going to act as like the interface for our agent. And then the app is going to send some data to a Superbase Edge function. And the Superbase Edge function will, in, will hold the actual land graph agent in it. So the agent has, you know, a tool called a uh, web search. Uh, and in our case, we're going to be using the service called Tavili, which is a really great uh, web search uh, service for LLM. Um, it's going to be given an instruction prompt. Uh, the model we're going to be using is OpenAI GPT-40 Mini, because I'm trying to save money. And uh, we're going to be passing in from the application a thread ID as well, because we want to uh, be able to give the user the uh, opportunity to continue a conversation. Um, even when the edge function had run once and then die off, we can spin up another and then pass in the same thread ID and then that should bring back the last conversation. And while running the Superbase edge function, it's going to communicate with the Superbase database. So the database is where the persistence and the history is going to be stored. So Superbase uh, database has a table called conversation state and this table has a uh, at least it has to have at least two columns. So one is the thread ID, uh, which is going to be UUID, and then the second is history, which is a list of messages from like you know user and assistant. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you a demo of what this application can do, and then I'll go into the details of how it works. So here I'm going to run our application, and in, in this case it's going to be a very simple script in uh, TypeScript, and because we have a pretty new version of Node, we can just run this TypeScript file just with Node like this. No need to convert anything to JavaScript. Uh, we just initialize a thread ID, which is just a UUID. And then um, in the CLI application or the script, what you can do is you can start a new thread. You can type an exit to quit, or you just type in your query. So keep in mind, this is an agent that can do web search. So what I can do is I can ask it questions, kind of like, um, who's the CEO of uh, Superbase? 
and it's going to send this query to our um, edge function from Superbase, which right now is running locally using Superbase CLI. And our agent has been able to come up with an answer and came back to us. So here's the agent's response. Um, we're keeping this, this thread ID. And then the answer is the current CEO of Superbase is Paul Cobblestone, who is blah, blah, blah. So it sounds about right. And the nice thing about this CLI that I built is that it also tells you what steps was taken. So it received the user's query. It was planning to approach to answer the query, determine the approach answer, searching for a current. So this is the actual uh, query for um, Tavili web search. Current CEO of Superbase 2023. And then it receives such search result, and then it, it finally used you know GPT 4.0 Mini to generate the final answer, which you'll see here. And here's the reason why we need a thread ID. So I can be like, where is he based out of? So when I say he, it has to refer to the same thread ID and pull in like the last messages to be able to know who I'm referring to, which is Paul from Superbase. And then it give me an answer. So Paul, the CEO of Superbase, is based in Singapore, Asia. Um, and again, it went through all this stuff and was able to give me a good answer. And what I can do is I can show you what it's like to not have a thread ID. So I can tell you, say something like a uh, new thread, which means it's going to go and create a new thread with a different ID. So now we have an ID that starts with 09A and the ID before was 8F0 and uh, 8F0. Yeah. So now if I refer to Paul, you probably wouldn't know who I'm talking about. So I can be like, um, what is his nationality? So I send in a, a query. So that will spin up an, another uh, Superbase Edge function instance. And then the answer is it doesn't know because it didn't know who I'm referring to because we're on a, a new thread. So the message history is gone. OK, so this is what the application looks like. I'm going to show you what the Superbase um, Edge function sees in this terminal. Okay, so as you can see here, this is what we see from the Superbase Edge function, and this is running locally on my computer. I mean, you can deploy this to uh, actual an actual Superbase project, and it'll be available for all you to use in production, but you can always d develop Superbase Edge functions locally as well. And as you can see, this, is, this, this was our first third ID, and then because the conversation was not found. This is the first message to the agent. It's going to create one in our Superbase uh, database. And then you're going to go through and run the agent. The agent decides to choose a search tool, and then it saves the conversation state to the thread. When I say save to the um, conversation state, I mean the table called conversation state in Superbase. So this was basically the last conversation that we had. What is his nationality? That was the very last one, um, the latest one. And then this is the one before that. And we have the conversation basically safe here. And then whenever the Superbase edge function runs, it can go in, take the third ID, look it up. So now it can continue the conversation as if nothing had, has stopped, even though we have spin up uh, three or four Superbase edge function by the time that we got to the final re uh, result. Cool. So. If you want to get into the details of like how I built the Superbase Edge function, um, there's another video for that. And I'll leave the link in the description.